Hello, we will get started here in just a few minutes. Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar, Download and Go, Simple Mobile Solutions for Maximo. My name is Betsy Ambrosius and I'm a part of the business development team at ProjeTech. ProjeTech is the most experienced SaaS provider of Maximo and this year marks 20 years of providing our Maximo as a service solution. Today's webinar will pre be presented by Alex Walter, Chief Innovation Officer at A3J Group. A3J and Project Tech have been partners for several years, providing Maximo solutions to the Maximo community. Before I turn it over to Alex, just some reminders. This webinar will be recorded and all phone lines have been muted. We will be sending out a recording of the webinar in a few days. If you have a question, you may submit your question in the field box. We will answer all questions at the end of the presentation. Alex, the floor is yours. Thanks, Betsy. I'm excited to talk about our mobility solutions here today with you guys. So uh, first, before we get into that, who is A3J Group? We're a full service consulting firm focusing on pushing the envelope with new technology in and around Maxima. We're also a Projetech authorized reseller and work um, with Projetech on uh, a lot of important technology initiatives. So when I talk about pushing the envelope with technology in Maximo, uh, I see things every day that prompt me to say, you know, how can we do things better with Maximo? So you know, I'm sure all of us have rented a car at one point in time and uh, gone ahead and returned it. Um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I brought back a car to Hertz and they came out with a an iPad, scanned the car. How you doing, Mr. Walter? Would you like a, a receipt? Sure, they printed it right off their belt, uh, handed it to me and I was on my way. Uh, and I keep thinking to myself, like, why isn't inventory in Maximo like that? Um, and what can we do as A3J Group and Projetech to enhance the user experience uh, in Maximo in the same types of ways. Uh, and then I also look at the mobility landscape and think to myself, if I can download an app and have dinner at my door in an hour with Uber Eats, why can't Maximo be the same way? Why can't I download an app and, and just start getting value out of these mobile solutions uh, right from the start? So we kind of took that second that that uber eats mobility example and started to really 
hash out, well, is this something that we could do? Is this something that um, that we can do both technically and is it something that the marketplace wants? So starting to look at some of the traditional solutions that have you know long time to value. You're talking about possible uh, server procurement, um, professional services, purchase orders, um, training, configuration, that kind of stuff. Um, it, it starts to become uh, a, a long lead time in order to get value out of mobility in Maximo. So we're really looking with our solutions uh, to have something that's easily deployed, requires minimal setup and, and configuration, uh, and is something that is intuitive to users. Um, and, and our thoughts overall are that we want to keep pursuing the idea that mobile Maximo should be easy and simple. So we we started off a couple of years ago by developing uh, a handful of apps. Um, and, and a lot of these apps uh, are available for download and use right away um, with your Maximo instance. Um, our, our goal was really to prove out that we could have something that that lives on the app stores that can be downloaded and used with little to no configuration at all um, and so we started building out apps we we built our first app mx approve which is a workflow inbox uh, two years ago we followed that up with our our, our meter reading app to capture and view meter readings uh, from a mobile device uh, and then followed it up since with with a handful of others, uh, and we'll go into depth uh, about each of these now. So the first app that we're going to talk about and actually view is our meter app. Um, with MX Meter, you can view and capture meter readings from the app. So um, think about it if you're doing like an operator round and, and your job is to, to write down on a sheet of paper uh, values off of instruments throughout the day. Um, rather than putting that information on a sheet of paper and filing it away in a cabinet to never see the light of day again, some of that information can be used. We see a lot of companies now that are doing more um, condition or use based maintenance um, than time-based maintenance. Um, and the conditioner usage information is a lot of times found um, on these instruments that we're capturing information for. It's just that we're filing it away on paper in a cabinet rather than putting it in a system that we could use for trending and analysis uh, later on. So that was the, the goal for MX Meter to make it easy to capture uh, and view. and. Uh, We'll do a quick demo of the app here. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the MX Meter app um, using an iPad mini here to display it. So uh, you can get an idea for the, the form factor. Um, the first thing that all of these apps are going to do is prompt you for your Maximo URL, username, and password. So if we plug in that information here and log in, um, the, each of these apps will connect to your Maximum environment uh, and make a connection. So in the case of uh, Maximum as a service with Project Tech, where your environment is online and available, um, all you need is an internet connection to, to make that um, and establish that connection. In the case of an on-premise installation, you'll need to be connected to the corporate Wi-Fi or have some VPN uh, in order to see uh, your your maximum environment. Uh, but the first thing we're going to see here is a list of assets uh, with meters associated with them in my environment. I can filter this list by typing in a description. Uh, as you can see here, typed in pump, I get a list of pumps. I can also uh, run saved queries uh, or filter my list based on routes. So if I click on routes, 
uh, and then touch on the uh, quarterly pump service. When I do that, uh, I get my my route here. Um, <clears throat> we can also do uh, integrated Google Maps um, to where I can drop pins on the map uh, for service addresses in Maximo. Uh, and I do have offline uh, capabilities as well. So if you go into an area that doesn't have coverage, um, you can still enter meter readings for the assets in your list, um, as well as you can go offline manually um, if you want uh, maybe a, a faster experience uh, where the app isn't necessarily going back real time to Maximo. So uh, if I click on one of these pumps here, I'm going to get a list of meters that are associated with this pump. Um, and you can see each of the meters there it shows you the, the last reading, the last reading date, and the inspector that captured that last reading. Um, we have three action buttons at the bottom of each one of these cards. Uh, the first one will allow us to create a new meter reading. Um, so we can come in here and uh, plug in a new reading value. Uh, and you can see here too, if there's a condition monitoring point associated, it's going to give you your upper and lower thresholds, um, just as an indicator that if we exceed those thresh thresholds, uh, there could be a work order generated uh, for somebody to come and, and take some action on it. When I create that meter reading, it's going to go ahead and, and create a new reading uh, and then um, allow me to move on to the next meter that's in the list. Um, but if I go back to uh, my outlet pressure here and click on the little view at the bottom, I can see all the readings uh, that have been captured. You can see the, the one previous was a very high one, so it's showing in red as exceeding the, the condition monitoring threshold. Uh, the other neat thing is if I click on the trend tab, it gives me a, a graphical indicator so I can see uh, life to date, year to date, month to date. Um, I can kind of get a feel for trending here of this meter uh, for this asset. Um, if I go back to my meter list, you can see here the little green bar uh, across the top gives me an idea that, hey, within the last 24 hours or so, um, we've captured a meter reading. So if you have a long list of these that you're trying to get through and you forgot where you left off, this would be a good indicator here uh, to show you that progress. Um, of course, I can go offline. Uh, it'll give me a message that says you're currently offline. Uh, when I click to create a new meter reading and actually create one, uh, what happens is a, a new meter reading has been created. It gives me that same prompt, but you can see in the upper uh, left hand corner that I have a, a pending reading there waiting to be processed. So if I reconnect, uh, and click on my pending readings. You can see I've got my uh, pending reading. If I click the process readings button, it goes ahead, it goes ahead and, and processes um, any offline transactions. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it from a MX meter perspective. We have the ability to do continuous gauge and characteristic type meters. Um, and it's pretty useful, uh, simple, easy to use, e easy to understand app. The next app that we're going to talk about is our MX count app. MX count allows us to do physical count of inventory uh, in our warehouse. So um, every once in a while, uh, we need to perform these counts for auditing purposes and for peace of mind. Um, and we're typically taking paper out into the storeroom, writing down counts at various bins, coming back to the Maximo system, and then keying that information into the desktop. 
with MX count, we have the ability to use our mobile device to uh, perform those counts while standing in front of the bin. We can scan um, <coughs> bin codes. We can scan item numbers uh, in order to pull up the exact items that we're looking to count, provide counts. Uh, we'll get some feedback based on variance, uh, and those counts can be pushed to maximum in real time. So we're going to break a little bit here to do a quick demonstration of the MX count app. So I'm going to go ahead and click on MX count here and I'll launch the app. Again, same thing I'm using the iPad mini so you can get the idea of a uh, form factor here in the app. Uh, if I sign out, you can see here, same thing. I'm going to have my Maximo URL, username and password that I plug in. And when I do that, it makes a connection to Maximo. Um, if I have a default storeroom associated with my uh, ID in Maximo, it will use that default storeroom. We can change the storeroom if you have access to more uh, than just that one storeroom. Uh, if you don't have a default or first prompt you for which storeroom you want to perform a count in. So I'm going to click the central storeroom. Uh, and when I do that, it comes back with a list of uh, records here. I also have the ability to do save queries. Um, so if I have uh, maybe a saved query that says show me everything that hasn't been counted in uh, the past couple of months, or if I have maybe some saved queries that show me um, different ABC uh, items, um, I can do a bin range search. Um, all of these options are how I can find a list of of items. Obviously, we we still have the ability to do um, searches here, and we have the ability to scan uh, as well using the native camera on the device. So um, first things first, I'm going to click on one of these items, um, and I can kind of I can navigate between items here. Uh, by using just general gestures like swiping. Uh, if I try and swipe um, while I'm on the first record, obviously it, it doesn't move uh, beyond that. So uh, when I'm here, uh, it's giving me a, an indication of, of the different values. You notice here that I am actually seeing the current balance. That is a uh, configurable setting to where we can do either blind counts or uh, not blind counts um, in the application. So if I have a, a current balance of one and I still have one in the bin, I say update physical count uh, and we can see it just moves me on to the next record. Um, going back, you can see we updated that that count to have the last count be uh, today's date and time. So we have uh, for this item, 623 feet. If we count it to 624, uh, it gives us a little pop up here that says, "Hey, the current balance, uh, the current count that you entered doesn't match uh, the balance. Would you like to continue?" Uh, if we say yes, we go ahead and continue. If we say no, it gives us the ability to go back and correct a mistake um, that we may have made, or um, just to enter it a second time. Once we've captured uh, these elements, you can see we get uh, visual indicators here um, of the fact that these have been counted within the last 24 hours. Um, it is configurable. We can also have them just drop right off uh, of the list if they have been counted uh, within uh, a, a 24 hour threshold. These settings are configurable as well. Here you can see uh, whether we want to show recently counted records uh, and the, the number of hours since the last count are also configurable. So like previously, we can also go offline. Uh, and if we do so, uh, we'll be able to enter in counts. Uh, and now you can see we also get a pending counts 
Uh, if we reconnect and go to our pending counts, we can process records in the same fashion. Um, and then we don't have any pending counts anymore. Um, so uh, offline mode works uh, as long as we have built the list of items ahead of time uh, when we go out and, and do our counts. Um, that's it for now. Um, going to flip back over to our presentation. Next up is our work management solution, uh, MX Work. So uh, we've built out a, a work order solution that allows us to do a number of things. Obviously, um, the the use cases for mobile in Maximo are, are very heavy on the work management side. So majority of time, uh, we're really looking to do mobile use cases when talking about uh, performing work. So um, it, the, the equipment that we've maintained um, for years and years and years uh, is, is typically static. So in, especially in like a plant or manufacturing type of situation, the equipment doesn't move. So the variable here is that, uh, you know, people obviously go to the equipment uh, when they want to do maintenance on it. Having a mobility solution that allows you to uh, view work, uh, view information about assets and so forth um, while you're standing there in front of the equipment is, is really valuable. Um, so given that, what I'll do here is just uh, dive right in. Uh, so you can see we have uh, MX work here. When I click on MX work, It'll launch the app. Uh, and same thing, uh, if I log out, um, I will get prompted for my uh, username, password, and Maximo URL. All right, so when I sign in, I get a list of work orders. We can use saved queries to filter that list down to only those work orders that are assigned to me. Um, and we have a host of other options for finding work such as uh, search, scan, etc. I'm actually going to start this one by creating a new work order. Um, and when we do that, we get a list of assets or locations that we can choose to, to base the work order from. So again, uh, if I type in, let's say pump, I get a list of assets back, uh, or alternatively, I can use the, the location button up top to search for a list of locations. Um, I have the ability here to plug in um, a description, a work type, some custom fields that we've added uh, called job code and uh, job number and activity code. The reason I included these uh, would be to show just how configurable this app is uh, with a simple um, tweak of a configuration file. Uh, we can make any fields uh, show up both on the work order details and when you're creating a new work order, uh, it's really easy and simple and we're really excited about it. Uh, for the description, I can also use voice to text here. The pump is leaking. Uh, so super simple to do that. And uh, obviously I can I can type out uh, if I'm so inclined. For some of these fields, they have value lists. So for example, uh, work type uh, has a value list associated with it. When I click on the field, it gives me a list to choose from. Uh, and I can click CM and continue. Uh, from here, uh, this is just a summary of the information. I can create the work order. Uh, and when I do, it takes me to directly to that work order. Um, so from here, I've got some buttons across the top. This, uh, this home button shows me um, some basic fields that I'm seeing here. And I can, again, configure this screen uh, to show me any number of fields 
in any order that I wish. Uh, the little um, check mark shows me tasks. Uh, so if I have uh, you know step one, step two, uh, I can view those tasks. The third button uh, is for work logs. Um, so if there's notes that I want to add to the work order, those will be shown and captured here. Uh, and the last button is for showing attachments. If I have a, an attachment on the asset for like a, a manual or a safety procedure or something like that, they can show here and we can launch uh, those attachments. For my buttons on the left, I've got uh, a few of them. Uh, first, I can complete the work order. I can edit it, sign it uh, via fingerprint or fingertip signature. Uh, capture labor time and, and add a work log. So uh, the first thing I'll do is edit the work order. It gives me a list of fields that I can edit here. If I add in, these are some notes. I can update the work order um, and, and that information goes straight back to Maximo in real time. Um, second, we can add a work log. Uh, so if I come in here and this is a new work log. I can add that work log back to the work order. Uh, when I come in, it captures date time and uh, the, the work log information there. For labor time, we can come in and add labor. Um, I have the ability to change the start date uh, and, and enter in a number of hours. Um, and we can add that labor time back to the work order as well. Uh, we can also capture a fingerprint signature. So if we want to capture a name of the person who's signing on behalf of this work order, John Smith. Uh, and then you use our fingertip here to capture that signature. Hit the sign button. Um, at this point, now we have uh, on our attachments a signature uh, that is attached to the work order in Maximo. So this stays as a persistent attachment here. If I click on it, it'll actually launch a uh, a window and pull up that signature that I just signed. OK, um, last not least, we can go ahead and complete the work order. Uh, I can enter in a memo or just hit the complete button. Uh, when I do that, it completes the work order uh, and sends me back to my list here. So uh, pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, but does uh, quite a bit of the features that we need a, a mobile work order app to do. Uh, we have the same offline capability uh, that you saw in the previous two apps where we can capture labor time or work logs or complete work orders, et cetera, while offline. And then uh, we have the ability to process those transactions uh, coming back from offline. So um, again, very very simple, straightforward, uh, and we have a lot more features and functionality that are in the works and on the way uh, with this app. So back on our presentation here, um, we have, uh, a, our, I mentioned before, our MX Approve app, which is a workflow inbox. Um, so imagine you are a uh, manager and, and you're always on the go and you get assigned some uh, task to perform. Either you know, you're going to approve a purchase rec or approve an invoice or approve a work order. Um, you want to be able to capture those on your phone and either accept, reject, uh, or reassign those tasks uh, rather than having to be at your desk um, in the desktop version of Maximo. So um, we, we developed an app to allow uh, management to 
see and interact with workflow assignments directly on their mobile device. Our next app is, uh, is called MX Reserve. And what that is, it's an inventory shopping cart for reserving parts from, where, from the warehouse. So uh, if you think of it like Amazon.com, hey, we have a, a catalog of items in our warehouse. Um, I want to search, find, uh, and reserve items uh, from that warehouse. We can we can do that. Uh, you can see um, images and thumbnails of the items if they're available in Maximo. You can also um, see if items are on order, expected delivery times, et cetera, and then go ahead and place uh, reservations for those items um, and attach work orders to them, et cetera. And then lastly here we have MX Admin, uh, which is real-time status of Maximo environments. So if you're a system administrator that's in charge of managing a Maximo environment and you're out and about and somebody gives you a call uh, on your phone that, that something's not working or uh, you just had, you know, or, uh, an interest in, in checking the stat of the real time status of an environment, you can use the MX admin app to do that. Um, that'll give you a list of environments. Let's say you have a, a dev, a test, and a production Maximo environment. You can list all of them out, uh, see which versions uh, of Maximo or, and which add ons or industry solutions are installed in them. Uh, you can also look at things like memory usage, how many people are logged in, how many database connections are being used. And then, you know, maybe more um, operational type things like uh, are the queue depths OK? And um, when was the last time these cron tasks ran, et cetera? So what's next for us? Um, we are really looking to build out um, uh, our suite of apps to encapsulate more functionality. Um, we're looking to develop um, some additional inventory based apps for receiving, issuing, returning parts. Um, we're always looking to do continuous improvement. We're looking to build out our work order app to include more and more functionality over time. Uh, and then we also have a, a big push to make these even more configurable than they are now. So uh, allowing for uh, cloud-based configuration of screens and, and behavior within the apps um, and to allow very fine-grained control to system administrators over how uh, these apps behave. So we got a lot of big plans uh, and we'll continue to build them out. Um, one thing to note that I want to add is all of these apps are uh, available to download uh, and try right now. So don't hesitate, go to the app stores. If you have an Android device or an iOS device, uh, go to the, the Apple or Google Play stores and download these apps. Give them a try. Uh, connect to your corporate Wi-Fi or connect to your uh, Maximus of Service environment uh, and, and see if there's something that you can use. You can start getting value from them right away. So uh, with that, um, I'll, I'll pause and, and take some questions. So we've had a couple questions come through and I'm just going to read these off to you and uh, let you answer. Um, so the very first, uh, very first question that we had is, you know, what version of Maximo do you have to be on to have these apps? Oh, good question. So um, these apps work with Maximo 7602 and higher. Um, the reason that it's so specific that way is because that is the version that the new JSON API was introduced um, and all of the calls go back and forth using that API. So that, that's a really important point to make. Uh, we're not doing anything special behind the scenes with uh, 
you know, how we communicate with Maximo. These apps are very tied to Maximo. They're very Maximo specific and they use the, the JSON APIs to make all the calls. So everything that you saw on the screen was pulled from Maximo directly. We're not like storing in the app anything like, you know, um, that wasn't pulled directly from Maximo. And then when we push back, uh, we're not doing anything special. We're just using the the JSON API calls to push back. So um, all sort of authorized IBM API usage. Make sense? Yeah, makes sense. And if you're not on 7.6, you probably should get to 7.6 anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. 7.6.0.2 or higher. Yeah. Okay, good stuff. So Along with that, I think you another question came in on connect it and disconnect it. Um, and I think you touched on it in the demo, but um, the question was, will this work in a disconnected mode? Yeah, let me, uh, I, I did, I showed some of those uh, uh, use cases there, but let me clarify uh, a little bit about the specifics there. So what we're doing is uh, in the, let's say the, the mirror app, for example, um, <clears throat> you're going to go ahead and build a list of assets ahead of time while you're connected. Um, so you log in, you need to be connected when you log in, uh, you build your asset list while you're while you're logged in. At that point, once you have your list, you can go out and do everything offline. You can even scan while you're offline. And so long as that asset that you're scanning is in the list that you had built before you went out, um, search find it etc so uh, really the key is um, that you have to build those lists ahead of time uh, same thing for work orders like if you build your list of things that are assigned to you before you go out for the day to do your stuff uh, you can capture as many offline transactions as you want you come back for the day uh, and you can sync up uh, with maximo and push those transactions that you captured as well as get new work orders or, or get new uh, and up to date information. Great. Um, so we have a couple questions uh, that can come in regarding uh, different mobility products that are out there. Um, the first one, uh, the listener asked, uh, we are exploring several mobile options, one being IBM Anywhere. Can you explain the difference? Yeah, so um, really the, the, there are a few big differences and we touched on them a little bit when I was talking about traditional mobile solutions earlier in uh, the presentation. But I think time to value is the biggest difference, right? Uh, for our apps, you download them from uh, the major app stores uh, and plug in your information and you're off and running. Uh, with Anywhere, there is uh, server installations that need to happen um, and you know we need uh, procurement of servers um, dev test production etc um, licenses that need to be purchased etc so all of that kind of comes together to make a much longer time to value um, I think the the general paradigm of having multiple apps for for job functions uh, is something that that is a commonality there. Um, and I think, you know, our configuration capabilities, while we didn't show that uh, behind the scenes, our configuration capabilities are, are simpler. Um, and I, I think, again, we're just, we're trying to be very simple, easy, intuitive, and, and have, uh, you know, really strong time to value proposition. And along with that, someone else asked, you know, what are the differences about work centers since that has been a big push with IBM from mobility perspective? Yeah, work centers are a great tool. Um, I think the the challenge with work centers right now are that they aren't configurable uh, and that they don't work uh, in offline mode. I think those are two things that um, traditional mobile solutions as well as our mobile solutions shine at compared to work centers. Um, I think the other thing is, you know, work centers are still um, being built out 
Um, you have a handful of them now that that do job functions for the roles they're intended, uh, but there really just is a still just a small subset of job roles in Maximo that have dedicated work centers. Um, and it's the same thing for for our apps as well. But you know, with the with work centers, you got to wait for that next release. Um, that typically is three to six months away. We're we're a lot smaller, more nimble, uh, and and able to um, uh, develop solutions very rapidly uh, for our user community. Awesome. Um, so we did run out of time, but if you all have any more questions, feel free to submit them. Um, and we will reach out with a personal call or email to make sure your questions are answered. Alex, did you have anything else to add before we close out? No, I just want to say thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks for the questions. Uh, like Betsy said, feel free to, to follow up. Um, look forward to seeing everyone, hopefully, at Maximo World. Uh, so go ahead and, and stop by our booth at A3J Group. Stop by and say hello to the folks at Project Tech who are going to be there. Uh, and thanks again to Project Tech for uh, allowing us to come on to their uh, webinar and uh, talk about our mobile applications. Our pleasure, Alex. Um, and we'll also be at Maximum World too, so um, come see us too. Everyone have a, a great day and we'll send out a recording to this webinar if you need it um, in the coming days. All right. Thanks, Betsy.